right, now that we have the basic idea of what a capacitor does and how it's doing it, let's think about the current and the voltage in a basic capacitor bulb or capacitor resistance circuit. We are going to be charging the capacitor, so this starts out with no excess charge on it. It is neutral, it's empty, kind of. Um, I shouldn't say empty. I should say neutral because it's not actually empty. There are charges, it's just that there's an equal amount of positives and negatives on these plates right now. So, I'm going to close the switch. The bulb starts out bright and then the bulb brightness dims out. Let's think about current to start with. This is a series circuit. We know that in a series circuit, the current has to be par uh, parallel. <laughs> current has to be equal at all points because the current is just the count of how many charges are going by per second. So if there's six million charges here a second, there better be the same amount here, 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 here. So this counts as a series circuit. So the current through the bulb and the current through the capacitor need to be the same. What is that current like? So for uh, current, let's do the bulb, versus time. So as time goes on, what is happening to the current in the bulb? Well, we know it starts, the bulb starts bright and ends out. So we know we're starting big, and we know we end at zero. All right, so let's think about the current through the bulb. It starts bright, and it ends out, the no current through the bulb. And it doesn't go down linearly. It turns out it is an exponential function. So we have this kind of downward type of curve for the current through the bulb. And that must be the current through the capacitor too because this is a series circuit. So those two are equal. How about voltage? So we can think about voltage as kind of a pressure, um, a, an electrical pressure. And what's happening here? Well, as soon as we close the switch, where is all the pressure? So the charges are gonna start piling up here. Um, it's hard to get through the bulb, that's our resistor. So initially there's a fair bit of pressure difference across the bulb, because the charge is like boop, 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 but then it's hard to get through, so things are piling up here. And then initially there's no, there's, it's neutral and neutral right away, so there's no uh, voltage, pressure difference, potential difference across the capacitor to start, but there is right away across the bulb. So these two are not the same. So we need two different graphs for the voltage of the bulb and the voltage across the capacitor. Time, time, I'm being sloppy on my graphs, sorry. All right, so the voltage across the capacitor, it starts out with no voltage across it and ends with a high potential difference, pressure difference, voltage. And so this one ends up going like this. Again, it is an exponential, not a linear function. And then what's happened with the bulb? Well, the moment the um, switch is closed, we've got charges piled up here. So we start with a large potential difference voltage, and we end with nothing because there's no current flowing at the end. So here it looks like this. And we know with voltage in a series circuit that the voltage of the battery must add up to the total voltage across the bulb and the capacitor. Is that what we've got happening? Well, it is. If I look at the voltage for time, so I've got, let's see, the bulb is doing this, and the capacitor, the voltage across the capacitor is doing this. Well, Look at what they add up to. If we add up, we end up with this being the voltage across the battery. So we are all good on voltage. So this is for charging a capacitor. Now let's do discharging a capacitor. All right, so now we've charged up the capacitor, take the battery out, close that circuit back up, and when we close this, bulb lights up bright and goes dim. So what's happening here? Well, we know, again, series circuit, the current through the bulb and the current through the capacitor have to be the same. 
And just like before, when we were charging, it starts out bright, goes dim. This is, again, kind of that exponential going down. Easy. Same as before. In terms of the voltage, well, what's happening with this? Now we don't have a battery. Instead, we have two elements. So when this is closed, then we only have two elements. The voltage across the bulb and the voltage across the capacitor had better be equal. You can't have, you know, there can't be four volts across the capacitor and 10 volts across this. No, because it's gotta be the same. We're going from this point to this point, this point to this point. We're going to the same points, gotta be the same voltage. Which means the voltage across the bulb and the voltage across the capacitor are going to be the same. And what's it gonna be like here? So the bulb is the easier one to think about. We start with a lot of current through the bulb, which means we start with a big potential difference across the bulb, just like before, and then we end with no current, no potential difference. So using that, we get the same thing as before. Now, does this match with the voltage across the capacitor? Well, initially, when the capacitor is charged, we have a ton of extra positives there, and we've got a bunch of extra negatives here. So when we first close that switch, we do have a very large potential difference, voltage across the capacitor. And then as the charges, you know, this one's like, uh, you know, think about this one. Okay, it's a little crowded in here, I'm leaving, and so it's gonna go that way, and we're gonna go back to our equilibrium. No extra charge anywhere, everything's nice and neutral, no voltage differences. So the, um, whoops, I gotta be careful here. Whoops, discharging a capacitor is even easier. And I think that's all I'm gonna say about those two. So now we've got the idea of a capacitor, we've got the idea of uh, how it charges something up, or how the capacitor gets charged, how the capacitor um, deals with the bulb in the circuit, in the series circuit, and now we've got ideas about the current and the voltage. And there are equations for these, and I'm not gonna get into the equations right now, I'm just gonna focus on the, the conceptual piece of it. Starts big, goes small, that kind of thing. All right, I hope this has been helpful.